I'd never rent. Why would you want to go and pay someone else's mortgage? Renting is money down the drain, and you've been told your whole life that you should get on the property ladder and buy a home, because once you've bought a home, then you're saving money, and it's an investment and stuff. And hey, at least you're not renting anymore and throwing all that money away and setting it on fire. I'm a multimillionaire, and I don't own my house, and I don't invest in any property. Today, in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly why this could be some of the worst advice that is completely normalized in the UK. Hello, my name is Jack Wicks. I've been in property for over 11 years now, and I wanna share with you the decision I made just over four years ago to sell the family home and move into rental, and why renting may just be the smarter choice of the two. At the end of this video, I am gonna give you a calculator to play with. It's gonna give you the exact results comparing both rental and purchasing to give you no more guesswork. So if you're on the fence about this, what's better, what's not, this calculator is gonna give you a definitive answer so that you can go ahead and make the decision that you want to make based on your current lifestyle. So four years ago, I made a decision. This decision was made after years of just feeling like this whole strive for property ownership and to own the house you live in and to get a mortgage and the success that that made you was just a little misleading. I personally felt annoyed about all of the money that I'd saved up and worked hard to get was just sat there, idle, doing nothing for me. Not only that, but I was then paying a mortgage every month. Not only that, but I was paying the maintenance every month, repainting the walls again, while I continued to pay out month after month for what felt like constant fixing of stuff. Oh my God, the constant fixing of shit in a house. And don't get me started on the redecoration. You go around the house once, might take you a year, and then you start the process all over again, going back to the start and redoing it based on the new fashion so I took a look at my business as a property investor at that point. I couldn't believe the returns my clients were making and what we were doing in the space as well. And I couldn't help but think my money stuck in this house could and should be doing so much more. But it was a risk. I had my first kid. I was in a nice family home in a nice area of the UK. And we'd worked hard to get to that point. But the house wasn't big enough. It wasn't in an area we'd liked. It was cramped. It was small and it felt like all of this hard work led us to a place in which we were meh about the whole situation but the risk was too high to leave what if the tenant didn't pay in the property that we bought instead of owning this property then we'd have no income whatsoever what if i bought an hmo and we got void periods or the maintenance went up too high or the bills went through the roof in the winter, which by the way, it always will. The risk was too high when my family had a nice safe place to live in and I had a new baby. But that's when the game changed. I stumbled across a strategy I'd never heard of before and that fixed all of the problems in my current business and then gave me the real idea, the real direction of, okay, if we rented and put our money into this, the what ifs are removed. It was a business model that had purpose. It was a business model that had predictable income, no maintenance, no management, no void periods. It was a set and forget and receive your money every month. And it was exactly what we needed to make the big decision to sell our property. And the answer to those problems was social housing and supported living contracts. I've built my entire business around it now. And if you wanna find out more, there is a video in here that I've gone into depth about this stuff. So I won't go into it here. I'm gonna to explain to you exactly why I think renting is a much better option than buying and why when we made that decision, we just knew it was the right one. And that was it. Decision made. Well, it wasn't quite it because as you can imagine, <laughs> my wife wasn't quite so keen to up and sell the property we'd spent six years getting to. But with my art of negotiation, and uh, obviously showing her a much bigger house, we agreed that this was the right thing to do. You see, for me, quality of life is the most important thing. Traveling is something so high on our list of values as a family, and when you own a property, it feels like you just can't do that enough. You see, I believe that we should live our lives in the now, not in the, when I'm 60 and retired, I can have a great life. I see people all the time in their 20s sacrificing everything for this property, for this property that's gonna give them security 
and money in years to come. But the sad truth of that is it's just not factual. I see it time and time again, people get into that age and realizing they're just stuck. That property that they thought was freedom is actually an anchor because it doesn't pay you. So when you retire, you either have to sell, which you don't wanna do because it's your lovely home you've owned for years and years and years and you've got memories and all that stuff. So you sit there skint in an expensive house before you then go and give it to your family, who by the way, will have to pay probably half to receive that from you as well. You see, to even own a home, it takes sacrifice. It takes years of saving, years of not going out and seeing your friends, saying no to holidays with friends and family. And I'm just not willing to do that. I'm lucky enough to have both parents around and I know at some day that that won't be the case. So I intend on making sure that I spend as much possible time with those loved ones as possible. I'm not gonna sit in an office all day long. I'm not gonna say no to going out for lunch because I need to save for that deposit, for that house. I want to live in the now, not in the 50 years time. Because the truth is you'll never be 18 again, 20 again, 25 again. And your quality of life unfortunately diminishes too. It takes me at 34 years old a week to get over a round of golf, hardly the most taxing sport in the world. And do not get me started on the hangovers. So if you like going out and you like exploring the world, do that now because it will get harder as you get older, then you have kids and then these things happen and you've missed out on a whole life in the best years of your life because of a house that you wanted to buy, because your parents put pressure on you to do that, probably to get you out of the house, but it's more about the fact that's how they were brought up and these external pressures of everybody saying you're not successful unless you own. The amount of funny looks I get when I tell people I rent, I sold my house in fact to rent. People just don't get it and that's why I've done this video today to give you the tools to be able to make this decision for yourself. Now on top of all these things that you've been told are gonna to be amazing and probably aren't, City AM actually reported in June 2024, not that long ago, that renting remains significantly more affordable than buying a home with a 5% deposit in the UK due to the lenders hiking up the rates. Now, if I started the video with that, you'd probably have turned off by now. This is reports. This is coming from the news articles. Don't get me wrong, I don't believe everything in the news, but this is factual. A would-be homeowner in the same article with a 5% deposit are currently paying on average 300 pounds per month in mortgage payments than they would if they rented. And that's not even taking into consideration the huge deposit that you put down in the first place. When you rent, you put down a month. That's not even taking into consideration how hard it is to get the damn mortgage in the first place. Have you ever tried to get a mortgage? It's horrendous. They wanna know how big your cock is before they even invite you in for an interview to see whether or not you're gonna be willing to pay for that mortgage for the next 50 years of your life. It's getting harder and harder to get them. It's getting more and more expensive when you do. My rent went up by 100 pounds this year. Some of my friends' mortgages and very like normal houses have gone up by 1,000 pounds a month. Now who's doing better out of that scenario? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to run the numbers. I'm not here to influence you to do shit. This is not for everybody. It's not a one size fits all but I want you to realize it's just okay to rent, to have flexibility. Imagine if you got a job offer, the job of your dreams, but you had to move, but you now own. You've got to sell that property. At the moment, the market's not great. You're probably not gonna get that much interest in it because people are holding tight because of the mortgage rates. Did you buy it last year? Because if you did, you've got to now just accept that all of that stamp duty you just paid is gone. You don't get that back. Then you've got to move all your shit out of it, assuming you did sell in time. Even if you do sell in good time, it's gonna take you probably six months because the UK is the slowest place in the world to actually buy or sell a property. Whereas if you rent and that job offer comes up, you simply give a month's notice, you go and find somewhere new and off you go to that job. If you're like me and you have a business that allows you to work anywhere in the world, well, why not go and live somewhere else? We're considering moving to Spain with the family just because sunshine and smiley people. <laughs> so when we sold our home and we moved into this rental, 
We invested all that money into social housing deals. And again, there'll be a link in the description that, that will tell you more about this. And, and if you do want to invest in, in any of what we do, then feel free to reach out to one of the team and they'll talk you through this. But I'm not here to sell you this stuff. It's just something, it's just the tool that we used to be able to pay the rent and all of our living expenses, in fact, from the same amount of money that sat there idle as a deposit. So by doing this, what we've done is moved from a three bed end of terrace property in an area we didn't particularly like to a five bedroom detached house in an amazing area, two minutes walk from my kid's school with the same amount of cash, which also allows us to go and travel and do what we want. And if we want to move, we do so within a month. A lot of people worry about the security of renting, but let me tell you one thing, if you're paying your rent on time every single month and you've done nothing else wrong, any landlord will find it extremely difficult to kick you out for no plausible reason. And the fact of the matter is most landlords want you there long term. It costs money to kick you out and move you on. And the better level of property you go to, the more those landlords are going to want you to stay for the long term. So the money we received from the investments that we made from the deposit that was sat in the property now pay for all of the rent of this property and the bills, which are horribly expensive, by the way, and most of our other normal expenses. It means that our earned income is untouched. The investments simply pay for the rental that we're in and all of our lifestyle expenses. Whereas with a mortgage, you're still paying out because all your money sat there, missing opportunity to make more. The main thing for me about renting, and I've kind of gone over it, is the freedom that it gives you. For me, freedom and flexibility is the new flex. It's the new Bugatti, fucking nice car, nice clothes, whatever else. The ability to just, should we go on holiday next week? Yeah, book. Get on a plane and go whenever you want, wherever you want. And a lot of you won't think this is possible, but I do this. This is our life. Even with two kids, we get a few fines from the, from the school, but it allows us to make decisions based on our quality of life. Now, you might not be a traveler. You might not enjoy traveling like I do. And you might want those cars and those clothes. Well, that's cool. This is still going to give you that because the money you're saving is working for you. It's putting money in your bank, not removing it like a mortgage does. And this is a really hard one for people to get their head around, is anything that, you, that takes money from you is not an asset. It is a liability by definition. So invest in something that puts money into your bank every month, cash flow. You cannot live in the hope that your property goes up in value. You can't live off that. You can't live off equity until you sell that property. So yeah, it might go up over value, it also might not. You cannot live unless you have cash flow and renting gives you cash flow because you invest the cash into cash flowing assets. And it adds to your income as well as your job or your other business. And you can layer that on top and on top again. And the outcome is gonna be drastically different. And I'm gonna show you that right now while I use this calculator. So here we have our magical calculator. You don't have to take my word for it from the other content in the video, just do your numbers. So I've done my numbers in the only way I can, which is based on my exact experience. So you're gonna be in places that are maybe cheaper, but again, there's so many variables on this. So click the link in the description, get this calculator and play around with the numbers. So again, this house that I live in, I know this is worth 1.2 million because it was valued when we first moved in because the lady was getting a remortgage. So we know that that is factual. That means I'd need to put a minimum of a 10% deposit down, um, which is 120,000 pounds. Again, this is in dollars. Don't worry about dollars. We'll just go with pounds. Um, the interest rate is easy 5% and that's all gonna depend on a load of factors. This is, this is assuming you can get such a large mortgage you'd need to uh, you'd need to sh prove and show so much earnings for this it's crazy the one-off cost so stamp duty i've got on my phone which is sixty-one thousand two hundred and fifty pounds you never get that ever again that's gone mental plus any legals and moving costs the annual appreciation is about six percent i'd say that was about fair um, and the annual annual ongoing costs maintenance etc are going to be one percent i think that's low but 
let's go with low. Then we go over to renting. Now I know this is factual because it's what I pay in rent right now. It was less than that when we moved in, but it's gone up a bit. Now I've put 15% as an annual stock. Um, again, I put it as stock, but this is whatever you invest in, whatever you can get a return from. 15% I do not think is that difficult. You could lend the money to a developer who's gonna give you a first charge, which is gonna be pretty damn safe, and you're gonna get a 15%-ish, 10 to 15% return on that. Our social housing deals offer our investors a 20% annual return. Um, if you put that in, the, 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 the thing is a joke. If you can get 20% annual returns, which genuinely, if you do your research and you learn a skill and you find the ability to do this, I'm not saying it's easy, far from it, but it's not as impossible as people make out. So here is the crazy number, right? So you can see here that the total wealth from owning that one property, that property in 30 years, is it? In 30 years time will be worth 9.3 million pounds. And by the way, all your eggs in one basket. The total worth from renting, if you were to rent at that level and get a 20% market return, it's gonna be 84 million pounds. That's like 75 million pounds more in 30 years than owning that property. So let's knock this down. If we go 15%, it's still way over double renting to owning if you can get 15%. Now 10%, I don't give a fuck what you say. There's probably a product out there in a stock or even towards the high savings accounts, you're gonna be getting close to 10. And yeah, it shows that you're on less, but marginally. And now let's take a look at the lifestyle you can live on 10%. Put in that deposit in a 10%er. The lifestyle you can be living, the freedom you would have, to get essentially the same result is absolutely baffling to me. So again, really hard to, for me to put numbers in for, for your specific thing. So click the description below. I just wanna end on this. Sometimes we have to just question things. Sometimes we have to look at the life we're getting pushed into. We can go as far as the schooling system. What do they want us to do? They want us to get jobs and they want us to get a mortgage that goes with the job because it sticks us in one place. It keeps us there and it might sound a bit woo woo for you, but everybody I know that has quit their job and gone and pursued a passion and gone and found out that life when you actually aren't restricted to that office and the nine to five, you can never go back to that shit. It's mental. And I just want you all to realize that there is no harm in not owning. Renting a property is fine. And if it works for you, forget what everybody else in the world says, because most of these people aren't living a life that you aspire to have anyway. And the ones that do have the life you aspire to have, they did this 80 years ago. It's a different world now. So you need to start doing your research. There is so much online about this stuff. I want you to know that you can do your research. And if you want to comment and tell me what's going on and you want to do this, but things are stopping you, I'll be more than happy to help. But for now, I hope you found that enjoyable and make sure you click the subscribe button. I'll see you soon.